about, about the housing here because you people all know about that. Uh, the streetscapes are wonderful. And I have a few of these. There's a, an historical park that has been created along the Humber. And it's not finished, but part of it is finished and it's being launched on Saturday. Uh, starting down at the mouth of the river at the bridge and moving up into Swansea to the Rousseau site. And I only had a few of these, so you take the information if, if you can't all get one. Just a question. And it's, yes? If there was one book that you were to recommend uh, that provides a general history of this area, uh, what, would that, what might that be? Because clearly you've drawn all your knowledge from a variety of sources. I'm just wondering well, if there's one book. There are, there are a couple of publications uh, by West Toronto Junction Historical Society and one uh, by the Toronto Public Library. Uh, it's a history of uh, Annette Street Library and it goes into a lot more than Annette Street Library. And I'm kind of biased about that one because I impersonate the first librarian there periodically from uh, uh, about 100 years ago. Um, the um, Kathleen Lazar's In the Valley of the Humber, it, it was, it, it go, it's 1913. She was Holmesmith's aunt. Most of the illustrations in her book were also used in Holmesmith's um, sales pitch on, on the Humber development. Um, there are, go to Book City on Door Street, and in there they've got a whole section on um, local history. Some of it's very local, some of it's Ontario, and just sort of look through it. They're good bits. Uh, Ron Brown's done some interesting stuff. I've acquired my knowledge uh, and, 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 and understanding from the fact that my dad was brought up on, on Dury Street. He, he told me, dear, in the winter of 1918-19, I remember the lumbermen going through and taking out some of the oak trees. Now they cut down the oak trees where the roads were going to go, but they didn't cut down the trees where the sidewalks were going to go, or, or, and they took out the oak trees where the houses were going to go. And, and, and the rest they kept. And that was through this whole area. And, and um, so I've got that sort of a, an information source too. And, and I know other people like that. Anyways, if you have any questions. You've mentioned a number of the uh, interesting buildings and stuff of architecture in the area. I just yeah. wondered how many of them are designated or come under some kind of protection. For the Not a lot. There's, there's the Runnymede Theatre, whose terrazzo obviously is not protected <laughs> since the City Works Department doesn't talk with anybody else and know what the heck they're doing. Um, the Runnymede Library. Um, we're looking at, at a number of others on the preservation panel. We're looking at trying to put together a collection of buildings by individual architects who, who did a lot of work in the area. Um, but it's, it's very slow happening. Preservation services don't like to move on things. Uh, I know I looked at the inventory today for this, for all of our ward, and there was only a handful of buildings that are actually designated. Um, I know some of the churches on Annette have been yeah. designated. Yeah. And the, the house that you were mentioning on Gothic, which is now a multi-family yeah. unit, that was the original the, the yeah. hospital in Bass, that's yeah. designated. But there's really only about four or five in our, yeah. and in, in, in the whole ward, and in our particular area, only like maybe two, three, it's yeah. not much. And, and some individual houses that yeah. really stand out and you think, oh, that's, that's a heritage house that's got to be protected. It's, it's not. Yeah. Uh, none of the schools, I mean, we have some beautiful schools, Gorgeous, gorgeous schools in this area. Very unique. None of them are protected. Um, you guys can 
go out and do that. Yeah. The school board will not be cooperative, I, I can assure you. I, I know that. Uh, York, York Memorial <laughs> Collegiate was designated. I was a school trustee at the time. I was the only person on the board that supported it. And I couldn't open my yacht because my mother was chair of the LACAC. And, and it would be perceived as a conflict, which it wasn't in any way, but, but I, I, I couldn't say anything. Uh, but it got designated. Council said, up yours to the school board and designated it. Good. But, the, but there aren't very many protected. No. They, they haven't been able to get Jarvis Collegiate designated, which boggles my mind. Yeah. They've been trying. So that, that leads the question then is, what, if anything, can the Residents Association or you know, people in this particular area as a community, what can we do to, to help designate, to help protect? Well, there, there are heritage districts, heritage conservation districts, uh, if you want to go that route. And you could get involved with the um, West Toronto Junction on, on that because this area, I think I got this area set aside as running meat, but I'm not sure whether it was included with, with the, the um, West Toronto because of the old boundaries of the city of West Toronto prior to amalgamation of the city. If you have any buildings or sites that you think are really important, you can come to the local conservation advisory committee and we can, we can talk about it. A, a, a site can be designated for architectural value or for contextual value or for association with a person or event, or a combination of those. So what about something like Parkside Drive, which I really enjoy driving past all the houses along there, and it's mostly intact with only a few egregious alterations. Again, that... I don't know whether that would really come under your I think our order is Parkside Drive. Yes, well, I'm it's not that it's necessarily but, in this, yeah. this grouping, but it's close by. I, mean, I just gave it as an example. Yeah. Well, um, the junction is trying to get a, a heritage conservation district together, and they're looking at High Park. I mean, because it, it's. Park, well, no, like High Park oh, Avenue. Yeah. North uh, yeah, yes, I know that one. And and uh, you know it, it it's it's slowly coming together. It, it, they got galvanized because they almost lost a house, uh, and they're they're slowly working at it. The 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 rules that you have to go through entail hiring a professional consultant, which costs a lot of money. Uh, you can get some money from Section Thirty Five. 37. 37. Mm -hmm. Section 4. Okay. Section 37 and Section 45. Yes. Yes. I, I discovered Section 45. <laughs> Section 45 may pay for some lights on the old mill bridge. Section 37 money can be made available to the community for funding for a heritage district study. But we're talking a lot of money. It used to be. Do, sorry, do people know yeah. what a Section 37 is? Do you, does that mean anything to anybody? <laughs> no. um, I have a feeling they may not know. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, when there's a, a development which is getting higher density and greater density in what they're allowed, like let's say this church was to be removed and in this spot they yeah. were going to be putting up a 20 story condo when you're only allowed to have maybe two stories. Because the city would allow them to do that, and they're getting extra bonusing for, for the building, that's called a Section 37. So in, in lieu of doing that as their special it's favor. It's compensation blood money. Yeah, it is. It's compensation blood money. And so that, that money goes back into the community, and it can be used for a number of different things. It's usually for community development, such as parks and maybe streetscapes and that sort of thing. But they only only recently, it was only about two or three years ago, and the, city, got them to yeah, the city allowed that that money can also be used to do heritage conservation district studies and put that together. Yes? Well, I'm 
a very concern at the moment between Pacific and Oak Mountain on the north side of Blue Water. There are some very good properties that are right now letting to rot. They will be demolished. I don't know how historical they are, but they're certainly very, uh, very much in sync with the neighborhood. And I believe it's a shame that uh, this will be demolished to build out of the It is a shame, but you're right. They are being demolished, and there is going to be development yeah. plan there. And, and, and out of that will be Section 37 money. Yeah, the yeah. level will probably exceed the uh, uh, bylaw uh, height between the park site and chain, would it be? Yeah. yeah. Is there anything we can do about that? I think that development's already set. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's done. Just put yeah. you in mind that there's other areas along the park. I know I'm um, that is